Anyway, my name is Rhonda Pierce. And I'm here in the Chicago area. And when Donna and Susan and I set this up uh, last spring, gosh, I thought we'd all be out of uh, quarantine and COVID would just be a history, but um, that's not what's happened and virtual lives on. So what's my mission tonight? I'm going to talk about um, Smet's Needles, the hardest working part in your sewing machine, the Smet's Needle. Um, I'm hoping to remove any mystery you might have about the Smet sewing machine needle while elevating your confidence in your needle selection. Tonight's um, talk will be about 45 minutes. I have it in three different sections. So at the end of each section, um, I'll be looking there in the chat to see if you have any questions. So as questions pop up, just go ahead and type those in the chat and I'll try to keep an eye on, on any questions you might have. So I'll talk a little bit about um, needle basics and then um, in the second section, I'll talk about specific needles for piecing and quilting, et cetera. And then I have a mystery question. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, I'm in my own sewing room. <laughs> And um, doesn't everyone have an eight foot banner of the Smith's color chart in their sewing room? <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna talk about the part, first about the parts of the needle. Uh, when I was traveling uh, throughout Canada and the United States for different events, um, expos and for stores, I was always traveling with my Smith's Super Demo Needle. This is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. And my luggage was always inspected by TSA. But now I'm traveling virtually, so I don't have to worry about TSA. So let's talk about the parts of the needle because when you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps you make an informed decision on what needle type and size to use. Now my needle tonight is on a little wooden base for display purposes, but I think even virtually, you can see at the very top of the needle um, is a beveled edge. And you might think, so what, a beveled edge? <laughs> well, when you go to insert your needle into your needle holder, you don't have a lot of wiggle room, right? So the top of your needle is beveled for easier insertion into the needle holder. Our home sewing machines require a flat shank, a flat shank. 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. Again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. There's a little transitional area here on your needle. This is referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope that you've noticed that your Smets needles have either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle, which is referred to as the blade of the needle. And Smets being a German company, they measured this area here of the needle using the metric system. So they measure the diameter of the needle and they get a measurement that would be 0 0.70, 0 0.80, et cetera. They take that times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar <laughs> with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera. It's based on an actual measurement of the blade diameter. Now, on the front of your needle, how many of you have noticed the groove? You can actually see and feel the groove on your little two inch piece of steel. But what's the purpose of the groove? For the, needle. the groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. Your thread should not be flip flopping back and forth. Nope, it should be a nice smooth line right down to the eye so you get a good stitch. We have the point and the tip, and these change according to different needle types. And also on the back side of our needle, how many above the eye, how many of you have noticed this little indentation? 
This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through the, your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to catch that th uh, thread. The scarf size and depth will change according to different needle types. So those are your basic parts of the needle. Now let me see. Oh, Donna, 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 I can't share my screen. Let's see if Donna can do magic here. <laughs> okay, what's up? Yeah, it says host disabled screen, uh, screen sharing. Let me try. Well, let me try one more time. Okay, so let me just scoot along. I do have plan B because you never know about technology. So let me just- I know, you. did you, are you back to sharing? Uh, no, no, right. it still says host disabled participant screen sharing. Ah, oh. all right, let me go to how we can do this. Let me go to your you. name again. We see you. It looks like you're sharing. Well, I've got some slides to share. So, um, and if we can't do it, that's fine. I've got some mm -hmm. uh, pictures printed out for plan B. Okay. So, let me get this right here. So, we've just talked about all the different parts of the needle. And, um, Oh, let's see here. Um, Donna, Mary is saying yeah. click security screen sharing. Okay. All right. Because I went to your name and it says to, I can make you the host. Would that help? Yeah, can you make me co-host? Because I'll be able to share that. That probably, if she was host, she would have sharing ability. Okay, so let me make her host. Hold on one second, okay? Hold on. Oh, okay, looks like- Okay, I made good. you host. Yep, now, now I can show you some goodies here. <laughs> okay. All right, so here's our, our Smets needle where you can see all the parts that I just mentioned, the butt, the shank, the shoulder, the blade, the groove, the point, the tip, but I haven't mentioned the eye yet. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to your Smets needle. Your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye is about 40 or is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch and the metallic needles, you can see that the eye is not only wider, but it's also elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, what do you do? Will you either move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye? So I hope I've solved the little sewing situation. We frequently encounter threads that break and shred. Just move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. Next, I wanna talk about the Smets color chart and those two, either one or two bands of color on your Smets needle. So this is your chart. On the left-hand side, you see the column is labeled needle type. 
So all the different Smets needle types for our home sewing machine are shown and many of the needles have a color assigned. On the right hand side of this chart, the column is labeled needle size and each needle size is assigned a color. Now look at the needle between the two columns. The top color band identifies the needle type. So on this sample here, we've got yellow. So we look off to the left under needle type and we find yellow is a stretch needle. On this sample, the lower color band is rose. So we look off to the right and we find rose is a size 7511. So this is a stretch size 7511. But let me just walk you through a couple other examples. My favorite go-to needle for piecing, quilting, and all kinds of sewing is a Microtech size 8012. So what would the two color bands be? Well, for Microtex, we look off to the left and we find purple. And for size 8012, we look off to the right and we see orange. So Microtex size 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be, what if you have two bands of orange? What needle type and size would that be? Well, we look under needle type and we find orange is Jersey. We look off to the right and we find orange is size 8012. So two bands of orange will be a Jersey 8012. Now there's one more thing I need to point out about the Smets color chart. Under needle type, um, the very first needle listed is universal. And there's no color assigned. In fact, the color box is X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, well, you have just a single band of orange. If it's a universal 9014, you have a single band of blue. So I hope this helps you identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of the needle pack. The Smets um, two bands of color um, uh, were introduced in January of 2014. So you can kind of identify um, some of your older needles by the color bands. Before 2014, there were um, a few needles that had just a single band of color, blue for jeans, uh, orange for jersey, green for quilting, et cetera. But the two color bands were instituted in 2014. So again, if you have any questions- There's a lot of old needles. You can um, just go ahead and um, put that in the chat. Okay. Next, I wanna talk about all those numbers and letters on your little needle pack. I wanna make sure you're confident in reading and understanding the information on your needle pack. At the very bottom of your pack are the needle sizes. I think most everyone recognizes needle sizes. So on this sample here, we have assorted sizes. We have sizes 7010, 80, 12, and 90, 14. But how many of you have looked at your Smets needle pack and you've seen that number above the size, 13705H, and wondered, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> I know I need a pack of Smets needles. I know Smets works with my machine, but what does 13705H mean? Well, 13705 means um, is your needle system. 130 slash 705 means that the needle has a flat shank. And the H translates from a German word that means scarf. Needle system 130705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf that 99% of all of our home sewing machines require. So don't let that number trip you up. Just think of it as a model number <laughs> for your machine. 
Above the needle system, we have the needle type spelled out. Above that is the SMETS name. And through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on this pack here, you can see um, to the left, the left two needles have green color bands. So we know that these are universal size 7010 needles. The next two needles to the right have orange bands. So we know that these are universal size 8012. And the needle on the far right has a single band of blue for size 9014, universal size 9014. So lots of information here, but let's look at one more needle pack just to make sure you're comfortable with the information. So again, at the very bottom of your package is the needle size. These needles are size 9014. Above that is your needle system, 13705H. So we know that this is a, a flat shank needle with a scarf that we can use in our home sewing machine. But look a little bit closer to that needle system line because at the end of that line, you see a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other needle packs, you might see a dash J for jeans or an M for microtex or a dash Q for quilting. So lots of information on your needle system line. Above your needle system, you've got the um, needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. And even today, above the needle type on some of your needle packs, you'll still see the German word for needle. Above that is the Smets name. And again, because of the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on this sample here, each needle has a top color band of red, red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue, blue for size 9014. So again, I hope this helped you out. Um, if you stop and think about it, it's more than just redundant information in this tiny, tiny little um, spot. Okay, let's see. Let me see if we've got some questions here. Okay, Chris, I see your question about stretch versus jersey and I'll be answering that shortly. Okay, so let me go back here. I'll be sharing my screen screen again, but let me just first talk a little bit. I like to ask, what do you think the most popular needle type is? And again, I bet most of you can answer that. Mm -hmm. The most popular needle type is the universal needle. The universal needle is the workhorse of all Smets needle types. The universal needle has a slightly rounded point. It works well with both knits and with woven fabrics. So let's now talk about popular needle types for piecing and for quilting, because I'm guessing you're all uh, quilters. <laughs> so uh, five needle types popular for piecing and quilting, and you bet universal needle is right in there. Again, because at that slightly rounded point, and I'll also just mention that the universal needle also has the widest assortment of sizes. All right, so four other needle types popular for piecing and quilting, and maybe it's one of your favorites. Um, and these I'm not presenting in any specific order. Okay, for piecing and quilting, the jeans needle, also um, known as a denim needle. Does that surprise you? Well, how many of you like to make jeans quilts? How many of you like to make flannel quilts? How many of you like to make those heavy duty raggy quilts? Well, when you make those projects, you need a hardy needle. What's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade, a reinforced blade so that when the needle passes through your heavy fabric and the throat plate, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle so you get a nice clean stitch. So the jeans needle, the special feature of the jeans needle is that it has a reinforced blade. Another popular needle type for piecing and quilting 
is the top stitch needle, the top stitch needle. And as we saw earlier in that diagram about the eyes of the needle, the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. The top stitch needle also has a slightly rounded point. Another needle is just as the name suggests is the quilting needle. The quilting needle was specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. Mm. The quilting needle has a special taper, a special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. <coughs> On the quilting needle, you'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of the project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. The quilting needle also has a slightly rounded point. And that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and for quilting. It just happens to be my favorite needle too. <laughs> but that is the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle. So when your books and patterns say, hey, use a sharp needle, they don't mean get a file out and sharpen up a needle. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're referring to a Smets Microtex needle. So what's a Microtex needle all about? The Microtex needle has what's referred to as a very slim acute point. Very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitch. And because the Microtex has the very slim acute point, guess what? The Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace the Microtex more frequently than any of your other needle types. And I'll also just mention that the Microtex is a great needle choice when you're working with batiks. Even if you uh, pre-wash your petiques, oftentimes the petiques are still tightly woven and still have um, dye residue. So the Microtex can really make a clean stitch through your petiques. So Microtex for piecing and for quilting. So if you're taking notes here tonight, let me walk you through these five needle types um, again for piecing and quilting. We've got the workhorse of them all, the universal needle, and lots of famous quilters use the universal needle for piecing and for quilting. It has that slightly rounded point. We have the jeans needle with the reinforced blade. So this is a great needle choice if you're making um, a denim quilt, a flannel quilt, or a heavy duty raggy quilt. We have the top stitch needle and its special feature is the elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We have the quilting needle specifically designed for piecing and quilting with a special taper. You probably use the smaller size 7511 for the piecing and the larger 9014 for the quilting of your project. And we have the Microtex needle, generically known as a sharp needle. The Microtex needle has that very slim acute point. So you get the most precise stitches. And with the Microtex needle, you're gonna need to replace that needle <laughs> more frequently than any of your other needle types. So all of these needles you can find at your local sewing machine dealer, your quilt or fabric store and the big box stores. If you're looking for um, an extra special um, offer, well, you can go to our website at smetsneedles.com and these are already bundled up for you. One of each of these with a handy little color chart on a luggage tag and the ever popular Smets ABC pocket guide. So you can get these um, at smetsneedles.com. Right on the home page, you'll see bundles. So just click bundles. Okay, let's 
see any other questions. Okay, no more questions. So I'm gonna scoot right along because now I think it was Chris, let me see. Yes, Chris was asking about stretch and Jersey needles. So fantastic. I appreciate your question because now I want to talk about sewing with knits. And if you haven't sewn with knits in a while, I wanna encourage you to do so because the knits today are fabulous. When I first learned to sew, I remember double polyester. Do you remember double polyester? <laughs> well, it was a great way to learn how to sew, but wow, um, knits have really come a long way. And one of the secrets to sewing with knits is using the appropriate needle. So there are two needle types that you must have when you're sewing with knits. And the first is the Jersey, um, the Jersey needle, also known as a ballpoint needle. The Jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle that you need in your stash when sewing with knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint. But when compared to the Jersey needle, the stretch needle has a narrower eye and a deeper scarf. So it's a different sewing experience that some of your fabrics demand. So if you're sewing on knits, well, how do you know? What needle type do you use, a jersey or a stretch? If it's just a regular knit fabric, you're gonna use the jersey needle. If it's a knit fabric that has lycra or spandex or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. So um, that rule holds about 80% of the time. Every once in a while you um, run across a rogue fabric, it's happened to me. Not so long ago, I made um, a cotton t-shirt that had 3% uh, lycra in it. So what needle did I use? Yeah, I used the stretch needle, the stretch size 9014. And guess what? My stitches looked a little bit wonky. I didn't like them. So what did I do? Yeah, I just switched to a jersey needle and I got beautiful stitches. So 80% of the time, the rule of thumb will work. If your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. If it's a regular knit fabric, you're going to use the jersey needle. And before I forget, I also need to mention how many of you like to sew with minky or cuddle fabric. I love cuddle fabric. In fact, the vest I'm wearing here tonight is a cuddle vest that I made actually a couple years ago using a Sandra Betsina pattern. And tis the season, isn't it, to <laughs> be wearing warm and cuddly clothes. So what uh, needle do you use when you're sewing on cuddle or minky fabric? you're going to use a stretch size 9014 needle. Even Shannon Fabrics that manufactures cuddle fabric and minky recommends Smets stretch size 9014. It makes a world of difference in your sewing experience. So um, keep that in mind. So sewing with knits, you need a jersey um, and you need stretch needles. Again, you can find all of these at your sewing machine dealer, your big box store, quilt, or fabric stores. You can buy these as the single card or uh, for being here tonight, go on over to smetsneedles.com and you can find um, stretch and jersey needles already bundled up um, for you with the handy little um, color chart on a luggage tag and the handy little um, ABC pocket guide. Okay, Chris, I hope that answered your question. Um, let me see. All right. Now, let me move on to one other type of needle. You know, needles don't really change that much, so we get really excited when they do. In 2019, we introduced a new needle. So I don't know if you've tried these yet or if even if you don't know about them, but I'm excited to talk about them tonight. Oh. And that is the Smets Super Nonstick Needle. Super Nonstick Needle. I think even virtually, 
you can see that these needles are a different color. This is the nonstick surface. Besides the nonstick surface to these needles, there's three, two other features I wanna point out. The super nonstick has a reinforced blade, so there's less needle deflection when your stitch is created. And the super nonstick has an extra large eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So when do you use the super um, nonstick needle? Well, how many of you like to do multimedia quilting? When you're working with a variety of different um, uh, fabrications, uh, maybe it's paper, some tin, or even different types of fabrics, this is a great needle choice. Or maybe you're, um, you've got a lot of sticky fusibles in your multimedia quilt. This is a great needle choice. If you um, like to do machine embroidery or machine applique, this is a great needle choice because what happens when you do machine embroidery and machine applique? You're working with a sticky stabilizer that has a tendency to get warm and gum up your needle. And it's kind of hard to sew with a gummy needle, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, machine embroidery, machine applique. Other uses for this super nonstick needle um, would be um, sewing on oil cloth, splash fabric, vinyl. What happens when you're sewing on vinyl? The vinyl gets warm and then it has a tendency to hug your needle and you can't see where you're sewing. So the nonstick will uh, resist the, the vinyl from hugging your needle so you can sew. Also, and one more use for the super nonstick would be when you're working with hoop and loop tape. Um, it stitches quite easily through hoop and loop tape. You know, it's kind of a finicky product, hoop and loop tape, kind of fuzzy on one side and sticky on the other, but um, the super nonstick works great. So super nonstick needle comes in four sizes, 70, 80, 90, and 100. You will not find these in the big box store, so you will need to go to your local sewing machine dealer. Some quilt shops might have selected sizes and same way with your independent fabric stores. Otherwise, we have these bundled up on, the, on smetsneedles.com um, uh, with one of each size plus the ABC pocket guide and the little, the little color chart. So, Give these a try. I think you'll you'll really like them. Okay, so Chris is asking, what's splash fabric? Splash fabric. It's um kind of like an oil cloth. If you go to if you Google splash fabric, or I think it's actually splashfabric.com, it's um it's similar to oil cloth, but the um it's a biodegradable finish. Um, so it's water, but it is water, re water repellent. So it's a really cool fabric. Let me see. I just happened to have, um, a little sample. It's not crunchy like oil cloth. It's really quite nice, um, and, um, pliable. So you could make a raincoat out of this and it would be really fantastic. One year I made, um, Oh, about a dozen little drawstring um, bags for my water aerobic uh, friends. So <laughs> you can keep that in mind. Oh, you can also look under Impware. I'll just show you the tag on this one here. I-M-P Wear. When the product uh, was first introduced, it was uh, introduced as Impware Fabric, but then they changed the name to Splash Fabric for our uh, sewing um, our sewing market. So give, give that a try. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, I got, I have a question for you. And the question is, what do you think the most frequently asked question is that I get? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it's a question that you ask yourself sometimes. So let me just share my screen. And the most frequently asked question is, how long do needles last? Well, here's the easy answer, the easy answer. So yes, you do need to change your needles. <laughs> 
take a look at these used needles. These are really super nasty looking. That needle on your left hand side, it looks like it has twin mountain peaks right there at the point. Look at the needle um, on the far right hand side and that looks like a cutting blade. So those are nasty and they're really gonna eat up your fabric. Um, I think um, sometimes you have to remember that the needle is actually, replacing the needle is actually a repair that you can do yourself. You should always have a little stash of needles off to the side in case you break a needle or it starts um, to sew wonky. Um, what do you do? You just change the needle. The needle uh, is not a permanent machine part. So I love this picture here because this is the same needle in each frame. It's just magnified um, increasingly. So on the left-hand side to the naked eye, it looks sharp, right? This is a used needle that looks sharp. But as you can see in each frame moving to the right-hand side, it's really quite dull. It's a nasty looking needle. It's quite dull. It's got that super burr on the very tip and look at all those burrs and striations. So what's that gonna do to your fabric? Yeah, not a good thing. It's gonna tuck and shred and uh, pucker your fabrics. So needles do get dull with use. You do need to change the needle. So how often, um, how long does a needle last? I don't know. If you start with a fresh needle and right off the bat, you hit a pin, well, you got three seconds of use out of that. You may have, yep, you may have bent your pen or not, but more importantly, what did you do to the point and tip of your needle? You probably created some burrs and striations that are going to compromise your, your stitch, stitches. So what's the solution? Just change the needle. Maybe you can get 20 hours of sewing. If you're not a very aggressive sewer and you're working on something kind of fine. So, wow, that's quite a range, three seconds to 20 hours of sewing. So we'll just average it out to eight hours of time of sewing use. But then I've got the power quilters that come up to me and say, really Rhonda, eight hours, forget it. I know to change my needle every four to five hours. So these power quilters are in tune with the clues to change the needle. So rather than ask, how frequently should I change the needle? I think you need to reframe that question to what are the clues to changing the needle? And we've kind of touched upon a couple of the clues already. What's happening to your thread? Is your thread breaking and shredding? Well, that's a clue that you need to change the needle. And the other thing I wanna say about um, thread and your needle is that if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. And what's that do to your thread? Break and shred your thread. So easy solution, inexpensive solution, just toss that needle. What's happening to your fabric when you're sewing? Um, when your fabric starts to pucker or um, snag your fabric, or um, maybe your needle is actually kind of tucking your fabric into the throat plate. Well, those are all clues that you need to change the needle. And what about your stitch quality? Are your stitches skipping? Are they uneven? Or maybe you're sitting at your machine and you're saying, well, Rhonda, I'm sewing in a straight line. How come my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, hello, you've got a dull needle. <laughs> and the solution is just to change it out. And then there's one other clue that people kind of overlook sometimes. They ca it catches them by surprise. Hopefully when you're sewing, you're in that bubble of joy, right? That uh, sewing, <laughs> that, that joy of stitches and you're just hum uh, humming along. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. And that's your needle. And it's saying, hey, I'm getting tired here. Change me out. Okay. 
If you ignore the, uh, the clicking sound, now it graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. And now your needle is saying, hey, I gave you a clue, change me. And if you ignore the clicking and the popping, what's your machine doing now? Your machine is going clunk, 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 clunk. Um, how many of you are familiar with those sounds? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know there's, I wish I could see all of you because I'm guessing there's a few people giggling or smiling because yeah, there's always the guilty parties and that's okay. That's what I'm here for today. I'm not here tonight to make you feel guilty, but to inform you. So clicking, popping, uh, clunking, clue, clues to change the needle, just do it. So I'm not trying to just sell you more needles, but I want you to have a successful sewing experience. When you stop and think about it, you've spent a lot of money on your machine, right? You've spent a lot of money and time finding your beautiful fabrics. You have spent a lot of money curating your thread collections. And what about all those patterns, books, and classes you've taken? You spent a lot of money. So that same quality needs to follow through right into your needle selection. You just need to change it out when you're aware of the clues um, to change the needle. So I hope that helps you out um, a bit. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is um, those slightly used needles, because when we sew, we often are juggling different projects. So if I'm working on a quilt project and then I need to make um, a little um, quick birthday uh, gift, maybe it's a little t-shirt, I, I need a different type of needle, right? So I need to change the needle out. Well, what do you do with that? original needle that's still sewing worthy. <laughs> um, yeah, you can set it off to the side, but then you kind of want you come back to it and you think, well, is that needle still sewing worthy? So I do have a product that I want to pitch to you tonight that'll help you organize your slightly used needles. I think most of you are familiar with the Grab It Sewing Tool Company which um, for quite some time has made the Grabit Magnetic Pen Cushions. Um, this is the most recent color. I love, I fell in love with the Grabit Magnetic Pen Cushion so much that I went back to the company and I said, hey, we need to buy this company. <laughs> so probably six or seven years ago, we bought the Grabit, um, the Grabit Sewing Tool Company which means that we now manufacture the, these magnetic pen cushions. And by the way, this yellow, which I refer to as limoncello yellow because I love limoncello, um, is the most current or the most recent color. So you can find this in um, some of your, your stores. Anyway, so the Gravit Sewing Tool Company. Yep, their primary product, the um, Gravit Magnetic Pen Cushion. But there was one product that was kind of overlooked and that's called the Grab It My Pad. And this is what it looks like. Um, this is the hand card that you're going to find at your sewing machine dealer and at some independently owned fabric and quilt shops, the Grab It My Pad. Now, this is the original version. This is the one I have right here in my sewing room. You can see that I've got used needles. I've been um, sewing recklessly um, a couple the last couple of weeks of the year. So I've been working through my slightly used needles. So it's a little bit empty right now. But um, last spring we updated the MyPad and let me just show you what it looks like, what you're gonna find in the store. And I think you'll find that it looks even sharper. So how does this MyPad needle organizer work? So it's an extra thick piece of felt we imprint all the different Smets needle types using the color codes. So we've got red for embroidery, blue for jeans, orange for jersey, et cetera. Within each needle type, we have a cell for each needle size. So now you can um, organize your slightly used needles, not only by needle type, but by needle size also. 
pin on um, the my pad also comes with a little flower head pin and you might be wondering what the heck is that about well how many of you have some of grandma's old smex needles that are not color coded you take the needle out of the pack and put it in your machine and you walk away and then you don't remember what needle type and size is in your machine so you can use the flower head pin. You just slide it into the appropriate box to identify the needle type and size that's currently in your machine. So I just slid this into a board embroidery size 9014. So I think this runs, I don't know, $14, $13.95, something like that. Um, you, again, you'll find these um, mostly at your sewing machine dealers. Um, and of course, it's on um, smithsneedles.com. So keep that in mind. The other Grabit product that I'll just um, briefly mention to you, how many of you um, have the ever popular uh, bobbin savers, the Grabit uh, bobbin savers? Yeah, the original donut shaped. Well, when I was traveling to 20, 25 events every year, people would say, Rhonda, Rhonda, I love the Grabit bobbin saver, but I wish you had something that was more efficient with size and that would um, hold more bobbins. So, okay, I'm up for the challenge. So I came up with the bobbin saver square and it's the same huggable plastic. Your bobbins, doesn't matter if they're plastic or metal, they fit nice and snug into these um, plastic channels. So if you've got your bobbins in here and the cat or a kid come by and swat it or use it as a Frisbee, your bobbins aren't going to pop out. So this was the original bobbin saver square. And then what happened? Yeah, now the machine companies are coming out with <laughs> jumbo bobbins, jumbo bobbins. So I think you can see that this channel is quite a bit deeper and wider than the um, original bobbin saver square. So we now have the one um, for the jumbo bobbin. So if you've got one of those newer Bernina machines, um, it most likely has a jumbo bobbin. So um, this is the one that, that you would um, want. So just wanted to point out those um, products for you. Um, oh, Chris just said she bought, oh, I didn't see what, said she bought one maybe that was the my pad I don't I didn't see what product you just bought okay um okay so Donna's asking how do we get the cards you showed with the information on the needles okay so Donna I think you're talking about the Smets ABC pocket guide yes you can get this so if you go to your local sewing machine dealer and some of your um independently owned quilt and fabric stores and you buy your Smets needles there, bravo, we want you, that's where we want you to buy your Smets needles and say, hey, I took Rhonda's um, Smets class. Um, do you have the Smets ABC pocket guide? And some stores might have that and they'll probably give it to you for free. Again, um, the bundles that we're selling on smetsneedles.com come with the, um, the little pocket guide. But I have something else that I want to show you. Let me just share my screen again. Because if you can't wait to get your hands on the Little Smets ABC Pocket Guide, guess what? There's a free app. So you can go to Google Play or to the iStore and just type in Smets, S-C-H-M-E-T-Z, and the free app will pop right up. The free app is based on the Smets ABC Pocket Guide. So here's a screenshot from Android. Um, the Apple version looks similar, but a little bit different, but, uh, but similar. So one of the things um, that I like about the app is it has a list of over 80 different fabrics. So you can click a fabric and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. So here you can see uh, chambray was clicked and it suggests to use a universal size 80, 12 or a 90, 14 needle. You'll also see a picture of the card of needles and further information about that specific um, needle type. Um, let's see. Okay, I'll come back to, yeah, I'll come back to that. I'm just, I'll show these last few slides. So my name is Rhonda Pierce. I represent Smets Needles here in North America. 
And I also have a personal blog that you might be interested in checking out. I do love to sew and quilt. You can go to sewmorestitches.com. To the blog, I would actually click 2020 sewing or 2021 sewing just to see the different types of projects that I've been working on. And yes, during the pandemic, <laughs> I have finished a lot of UFOs. I can come back to that later. But um, the other thing, I'll just walk you through the ABC Pocket Guide. You can also download this for free um, at smetsneedles.com. Under um, the top menu, at, um, uh, look for resources, and then there'll be a drop-down menu. And I think the Smets ABC Pocket Guide is the fourth item. So you can print this out on um, eight and a half by 11 paper. It's not gonna look as cute as this little guy here, but it's the same information. So let me do a quick walkthrough. The slides that I've shown you tonight um, are in the ABC Pocket Guide and also in this, the uh, app. So we've got the needle anatomy um, and their, their functions. We've got this nice um, diagram about the eyes of the needle. So you don't have to remember that the um, embroidery needle has the largest eye and the top stitch and metallic have um, the elongated eye. Then on page um, three, we've got how to read the needle package. So as a refresher, so do you remember what 130705H means? That's your needle system. It means that the needle has a flat shank and a scarf for your home sewing machine. Then we photographed all the different needle types. We tell you what sizes are available, the special features, the color coding, et cetera, and special use, uses. Also at um, the bottom of page six, for the next, oh, 10 or so pages in the footer here, we've got a little reference, what needle to use with what fabric. So now you don't have to remember. Uh, let me see. The Smets color chart is in here. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that on page 37 are clues to change the needle. And I think you can see that uh, that is one nasty looking needle. <laughs> a, a worn out needle up there with a super burr. So um, as a reminder that needles don't last forever. So again, you can go to smetsneedles.com underneath resources and you can print this little guy out. While you're at smetsneedles.com, I would um, suggest that you also sign up for my monthly newsletter. Now, I try to not waste your time. I try to have only pertinent and sometimes fun information in my newsletters. It comes out um, at the beginning of each month. And um, about three times a year, I have a special. And let me just tell you, we really hit the jackpot this past year. For our subscribers um, in November, it was right before um, Thanksgiving, we put out a special offer to our subscribers for a gift item. And that was um, a tin. This is a nine and a half inch diameter tin. Uh, it's the only one that's left. <laughs> we thought that we had enough inventory that we would probably sell out in three days. We sold out in 45 minutes of our newsletter going out. So uh, people love our newsletter. They do read them. And I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. So once we sold out, I got in touch with the uh, manufacturer and I said, hey, we sold out, we need more tens. And he said, hey, are you familiar with the pandemic and the supply um, <laughs> issues that are taking place right now? He goes, he said, I've only got 500 tens left. And I said, we'll take them. So he imprinted um, all these different needle points and tips um, on the tin and uh, gosh, we sold 500 within a day and a half. So <laughs> you just never know um, what's going to happen. The other thing that I'll mention to you is um, if you're on Facebook, I invite you to come to Facebook and like Smets Needles, all one word. 
And on the first Wednesday of every month, I do a Facebook Live at noon Central Time. After all, I'm here in the Chicago area, so Central Time. Um, and uh, it lasts about 45 minutes. I have a variety of things to talk about. I talk about, um, you know, what's happening in our sewing industry, et cetera. And I always have awesome giveaways. This past year, my giveaways uh, ranged anywhere from three to $500 because I get a lot of free samples from manufacturers. So it's a lot of fun. People from the, around the world show up and we have a few giggles. So uh, go into Facebook and like um, Smith's Needles. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, okay, any other questions? Let me see if there's any more questions here. Well, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Can you believe that you just sat in on almost a full hour about the hardest working piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smets needles? <laughs> I realize that needles aren't glamorous. They're not sexy and they're not romantic. <laughs> and it's easy. It's easy to get sidetracked because there's so many beautiful fabrics and threads and patterns and books and authors. But you know what? You can't sew without your Smith's needle. So I hope I've answered some questions for you tonight. I hope I made learning about needles enjoyable. I like to think that you only need to hear me talk once and then you know where to find more information at smetsneedles.com. Get your hands on the little Smets ABC pocket guide and certainly buy your Smets needles from your local store. Okay, well, Donna, you have anything else for me? Let's see, Carol is saying, oh, oh, Chris, okay. Is there a difference between gold embroidery? Okay, so Chris, gold embroidery, that is the, currently the only titanium needle that we have. Here's just a quick look of the packaging of the Smets gold needle. It's a very colorful card, titanium. Um, the gold is actually titanium, a titanium um, coating that helps to keep the needle cool. The um, Smets Gold Needle also has an enlarged eye, so there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So, you know, you've got options. If you do machine embroidery, you've got your regular embroidery needle, you've got the Smets Gold Embroidery Needle, and you also have the uh, super nonstick needle for embroidery options. So good questions. Let me see. I think that's it. Carol says, thank you. So I hope that our paths cross uh, at a local uh, quilt show or maybe a quilt shop. I do love to sew. Oh, I know. Well, let me just show you my first pandemic project that I finished. Mm -hmm. This was a project that... Um, because been setting in my drawers for 17 Our years. itty bitty blocks. <laughs> I had made one year made 15 uh, Christmas quilts and I saved all the scraps and then I used thangles. How many of you used thangles? My thangles made one inch half square triangles. So I had over a thousand one inch half square triangles. I had the single units together but I hadn't put uh, larger units together. So I woke up one morning uh, in March at the beginning of the pandemic and said, today's the day. So I put all of these triangles together. I um, actually kind of auditioned my triangles. I thought, wow, a thousand triangles. I have more than enough. I can just audition and set them off to the side. Well, you know what? I wanted a square quilt. <laughs> So I actually had to use these little samplers. So this one here, I thought, oh, those look like pouty lips. I don't want to do that one. This little uh, square here, I thought, mm, don't really like this. These here are pinwheels, but wow, you can't really distinguish them as pinwheels, right? So I just decided to set all my thangles, all my little triangles um, on point. So uh, that was my first um, UFO. Uh, pandemic job that I finished. But you'll see more. I did um, a sashiko quilt that I wish I could show you. 
but you can, uh, it's hanging here in my sewing room, uh, 48 12 inch hand stitch sashiko panels that I finally just took the time to stitch them together. I actually, I surged the blocks together. It's a beautiful wall hanging here in my quilt room. And guess what? I finished that in three hours. That was a 15, a 15 year project. So <laughs> you know what, with the pandemic and now with Arctic air that's here in our Chicago area, I always say it's a great time to sew. Okay, everybody, it's eight o'clock. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for 